Hi, good afternoon, everyone. In today's class, we will discuss the current affairs of last week. Those who are new here, we are taking these classes from Monday to Friday at 2.15. Every Friday at 2.15. In this class, we are covering the different sources like uh, events the Hindu, uh, the Indian Express, Main Premium, Times of India, Hindustan Times. <laughs> it is not easy to cover for a single student. So you can focus on a single newspaper. The other we are covering here, the different sources. The main idea behind these classes, so you can learn how to read the paper and what's the relevance of uh, these topics covering the paper in different examination. So today we will cover these four topics. We will see both the prelims as well as the mains perspective. The first topic is toward decarbonizing transport 2023. Second is the cell-free DNA. Third is the urea gold. And fourth is the India rice export ban. The first topics will come under GS3, environment. Cell-free DNA is also the part of the GS3, but it will come under the science and technology. Specifically, we can say in the biotechnology. The urea gold, it can be come under the GS1 and GS3. In GS1, it will come under geography. And in GS3, it will come under the economy and agriculture. And the fourth will come under the GS3 under economy. So this is the relevance with your syllabus. The different topics comes under the different syllabus headlines. Decarbonizing transport is an environment topic. Self-free DNA is a science and tech related. Urea gold is also geography as well as the economy agriculture. And the India rice export ban is also the topic of the economy. So we will discuss all these four topics one by one. The first we will take about the decarbonizing the transports. So this is a report which released recently by the Niti Ayo in the G20 meetings. Uh, like India is taking the presidency of the G20 this year. And they're discussing about the various climate change policy the policy related to the decarbonizing the transport, even it's the policy related to the sustainable infrastructure as well. So that's why the decarbonizing the transport in the news. If we see the different type of events about the Paris climate deal, events the Glasgow, the main idea behind any of the conference of party to decrease the temperature by two degrees Celsius. The main idea behind the each climate conference to decrease the temperature by two degrees Celsius. If there is a decrease in the temperature by two degrees Celsius, means we need to be focused on the decrease in the greenhouse gas or decrease in the carbon dioxide, which is a major factor, a major gas in a greenhouse effect. Due to the increase in the temperature, there is a various phenomenon like the drought, increase in the sea water level, or maybe increase in the heat waves. These are also the negative impact, negative effect of increase in the temperature. So in the each climate conference, each country, each government, the specifically is focusing on decrease in the temperature. That's why the role of decarbonizing the transport came. Any idea how much percent of pollution is contributed by the transport sector in the world level? Any idea? If we see Transport sector at the world level almost contribute 24 to 25% of 
24 to 25% of total greenhouse gas emission. Total 24 to 25% of the total greenhouse gas emission. Out of that, this amount is released by the transportation sector. Means a huge share in the greenhouse gas emission. And if this going on with the same pace, it will go up to the 40% by 2030. And we are not focusing on the policy, then by 2050, it will go up to 65%. This is the potential of this sector in contributing the greenhouse gas. So we need to be focused on how we decarbonizing the transport. So in this topic, the first of all, we see what is the decarbonization of the transport. Second, what can be done, what steps can be taken to reduce the carbon dioxide emission in the transportation sector. And finally, the government policy related to the, this sector and what is the recommendation of the Niti Aayog. So these four will be the flow of the, this topic. The first, we will discuss about the decarbonization of the transport. Second, we discuss about the way to solve this issue. Third, the government policy. And fourth is the Niti Aayog recommendation. So you can directly quote these recommendations in your answer. You can directly quote the government policy in your answer. You can suggest the way how we can control or we can reduce the decarbonization of the transport. This is the world level data. Now let's come to the India. What the share of this sector in greenhouse gas emission in India? In India, this sector almost contributes 15 to 16 percent of total emission. In India, this sector almost contributes 15 to 16 percent, means it's a huge share in the greenhouse gas emission through the transportation sector. We are living in a country where the aspiration is to get If you have a lot of people, you will be able to get We need our car. We public transport mein travel nahi karna hai. But what is the region? Aap car khari denge. There is an increase in the emission. There is an increase in the temperature. There is an increase in the drought. There is an increase in the sea level. So finally, means you are buying a car, but finally the negative impact on yourself only. Climate change ka impact kis pe ho raha hai? Finally, on the human being. So, if we are purchasing a new car, if we are not using the public transport, if it's a good available into the city, it's better to use the public transport instead of going with an individual car. Similarly, in this context, the 15 to 16 percent is the very high amount that India has a share in the greenhouse gas emission. And out of these 15, 16 percent, 90% is of road transport. 90% share is of the road transport. Means through bus, through cars, to through wheelers, two wheelers, three wheelers. So 90% of the share. And if it going with the same pace by 2030, this sector will contribute almost 65%. This sector will contribute almost 65% of the greenhouse gas emission in the country. If you don't stop it, in 2050, there will be an increase up to 200%. By 2030, increase up to 65%. And by 2050, there is an increase up to 200%. If we see a 200% increase of the 16%, almost more than 40% of the emission. And a 65% increase means almost 25 to 30% of the total emission by this sector. So means if we are looking at the policy of the government, 
easily availability of the car. Now you can buy the car on the EMI you know, after paying the 50,000 rupee. You can buy the two wheeler after paying the 10,000 rupee only. On the another side, if we see there's a negative impact and the government policy in the both the side of it is contradictory. On the one side, you are increasing the availability of the individual car. On the another side, you are saying we need to decrease the pollution. We need to decrease the greenhouse gas. But we are focusing on specifically of the mobility. And now we are moving toward the electric mobility. But it will take so much time. This industry will stabilize by 2040. So till then, there will be a huge emission by this sector. So this data you can directly use in your introduction part. If there's a question related to the decarbonization of transport, even if it's a question related to the climate change and the decarbonization of transport, you can directly use this data in the Indian context and the previous data in the world context. If you are using these kind of the data, you means you are writing an authentic data and you know something about the sector. Without writing the data in your answer, means you are writing the generic answer. Okay, now let's come to exactly what is the decarbonization of the transport sector. What is decarbonization? of transport sector. What does it mean exactly? What's the decarbonization? Yes, we can say a carbon neutral. Carbon neutral transport carbon neutral transport. In the three words, we can explain decarbonization of transport means the carbon neutral transport, where we are decreasing the emission of the carbon dioxide from the vehicular pollution. And this emission may be from the railway. It's maybe from the road sector. Road sector means it may be from the truck. It's maybe from the car. It's maybe from the two-wheeler. It's maybe from the airlines and from the shipping industry. All these are releasing the carbon. This data is from the Niti Aayog, the sent report, Mohit. So you can quote the Niti Aayog. These are the major source. And we are using the fossil fuel derived fuels like petrol we are using diesel we are using and the emission from these are very high but the government is taking the steps steps like the introduction of the fame scheme faster adaptability in the manufacturing of the electric vehicle moving toward the bs6 yes i mean this is data is from the niti ayog Moving toward the BS6 from BS4, instead of moving, we are like a year was a 2022, but we moved from 2020 itself. So we can control the pollution. We will also discuss about the government policy, but this is like a, what's exactly the decarbonization. Here we are using the fossil fuel derived from coal. So this is the decarbonization of the transport sector. Negative impact, we look at like a negative impacts on the climate change and the other things. Now, what we can do? We can move toward the electric vehicle. The first we can say, we can move toward the electric vehicle. But in the case of the electric vehicle, so you can note down the points. In the case of the electric vehicle, from where we are generating the electricity, what is the major source of electricity generation in India? More than 90% of the electricity we are generating from the thermal power plants. 
means indirectly it's impacting the climate it's impacting the environment so what should be done we are moving toward the electric vehicle but our production is from the natural resources that indirectly impacting so we need to be focus on the renewable energy renewable energy means the electricity derived from the solar energy from the wind energy from the hydropower projects so we should focus on the renewable energy then we can move like a hybrid vehicle in the case of the hybrid vehicle means the some part of them can be derived by the fossil fuel driven and the some part with the electric driven or maybe with the cng also next we can say use of the biofuel use of the biofuels how the biofuel is derived there are different generation of the biofuels first generation second generation third generation fourth generation what is the difference between these generation kya difference hai this was the question in the prelims also in 2018 what's the difference between the different generation the question was in the prelims they given the four products which of the followings are used in the second generation of the biofuels so you should remember these kind of examples also in the first generation second generation so let's see here are the types of the biofuels the first generation biofuels are those biofuels which are made from the food crops means the excess production of the wheat excess production of the rice excess production of the sugar cane can be used in the used for the production of the biofuels those are known as the first generation biofuels but what the issue with these fuels means they are impacting the food security of a country they are impacting the food security of a country because we are deriving them from the food crops then after that the government focused on the second generation biofuel in the second generation biofuels they are used from the waste material the biomass from the agriculture the waste from the agriculture stable burning the issue during the delhi pollution the dot stable from the rice field paddy field we are using in the second generation of the biofuels so here we are mainly focusing on the waste material we are mainly focus on the material which have the high amount of cellulose so it can be easily available and we can produce the biofuels at the very less cost third we can go to the third generation the third generation of the biofuels are going from non food grade species like in the case of fungi that can be used for the production of the biofuels then the fourth generation from the energy crops from the different kind of the genetically modified organism genetically modified species that those are used for the generation of the fourth kind of the biofuels yes ethan ethanol blended fuels we can say after the derivation of the biofuels that is converting into the ethanol and that we are using in the mixing with the petrol these are the generation of the biofuels means we can move toward the biofuels and there are the various government policy related to it now the excess production of the food can go to the biofuels in the case of the biomass which lead to the pollution in the country that also help in the generation of the biofuels you can quote these kind of the examples when there is a question related to government policy what's government is doing how we are moving towards from the conventional to the non conventional source the, from the non renewable to the renewable source so you can quote these kind of the example next we can go to the ha huh. ha huh. stable burning bataya na maine aapko stable 
द वेस्ट फ्रॉम द राइस फील्ड दैट्स द जनरेशन जिसको हिंदी में पराली भी बोलते हैं दैट्स यूज फॉर द जनरेशन ऑफ द सेकेंड जनरेशन ऑफ द बायोफ्यूल नाउ लेट्स कम टू द नेक्स्ट टाइप ऑफ द व्हीकल इज द हाइड्रोजन व्हीकल बायोफ्यूल्स इट कैन बी द फर्स्ट जनरेशन सेकेंड जनरेशन थर्ड जनरेशन और द फोर्थ जनरेशन then hydrogen fuel the government recently the indian government framed the hydrogen policy and now the government is focusing on the hydrogen run transport vehicle through the hydrogen fuels even our transport minister who is our transport minister Nitin Gadkari is using the vehicle of the hydrogen derived fuel, and these hydrogen fuel is working on the basis of fuel cell. Eleventh, twelfth, may science पढ़ा होगा fuel cells that based on the fuel cell which lead to the final release of the energy. Let's see in the car how it's work. There are two hydrogen cylinder. where we fill the liquid hydrogen and here is the fuel cell they are directly connected and these fuel cell convert this into the electricity which used for the driving the vehicle and the good thing this is only release water vapor from the emission this release only the water vapor no greenhouse gases no carbon dioxide no nitrogen dioxide no sulfur dioxide only the water vapor so we are also looking for the these kind of the engine manufacturers with the company the india government is dealing with the different kind of the company so they can manufacture the hydrogen driven vehicles next we can come to what can be the next kya ho sakta hai focus on the public transport public infrastructure development public infrastructure development means we need to be develop the or increase the infrastructure for the road transport railway and the local transport means the in each city and we can also move toward the new generation medium even it's the bullet train or even it's the port taxi port taxi even it's the bullet train so means the government should focus on the increasing the public infrastructure so the public is moved toward from the single handed vehicle to the government vehicle agar kisi shahar ka public infrastructure acha ho zyada crowded na ho to everybody will prefer the public transport for example we can give the example of delhi metro in delhi metro daily more than 20 lakh people travel more than 20 lakh people in a single day travel through delhi metro if all these individual means everybody cannot buy if i take even you know, 10 lakh can buy the cars the what's the state of the road in delhi we can imagine so means development of the new kind of the transport medium development of a sustainable transport medium for the public that can be the game changer for the decarbonizing of the transport what can be next subsidy on electric vehicle subsidy on electric vehicle like in the case of the fame faster adoptability of the manufacturing of electric vehicle the government was providing the subsidy approximately in between 20% to 30% 
for the electric vehicles and there was a very less road tax when we are taking these vehicles so the person is moved toward the electric vehicle instead of the normally uh, petrol or the diesel vehicles so these are the some of the idea these are some of the policy the government can do related to decarbonization of the sector now we need to be focus on what's the government initiative government ne kya kya kiya hai government initiatives ha huh. in the case of the subsidy part the government providing approximately 20% to 30% of subsidy on electric vehicle like ola scooter ola s1 ke bare mein sabko pata hoga its normal price is almost 1 lakh 10000 lakh 20000 after the subsidy the people are getting at 90000 85000 according to the rate and these subsidy vary from state government to state government delhi was the union territory which was providing the highest subsidy delhi almost like uh, 35000 they were providing on a single scooter now the government initiative the first initiative niti ayog niti ayog with the international transport form itf niti ayog with the help of international transport form start a initiative yes charging station that comes under the infrastructure the establishment of the more charging station for the electric vehicle that can also be a game changer niti ayog plus with the international transport form they start a initiative known as dt double e d t e e decarbonizing transport of emerging economy decarbonizing transport for emerging economy so this was the first initiative by the niti ayog for decarbonizing the transport in india and also helping the emerging economy those can deal with the decarbonization of their transport as well if we are coming to the major component of the government of india the first scheme was the introduction of the bs6 bharat stage 6 fuel bharat stage 6 in 2020 government moves means we were before two years we started using the bs6 engines bs6 engine approximately release less 80% less than the bs4 engines pollution by the bs4 engines was higher than the bs6 engines and almost there is a decrease in the 80% of the gases when we are using the bs6 engines and this is the one of the reason why there is a increase in the prices of the vehicles after 2020 the one reason was the introduction of the bs6 engine in the every vehicle and in india the world largest manufacturer hero motor co was the first company in the india for the two wheelers which started the manufacturing of the bs6 engines and get the certification for it hero motor co so there was a decrease in the 80% if we come to the ministry of environment and ministry of environment forest and climate change is the agency who make the rules related to emission related to emission but this is implemented by the central pollution control board there are two agency involved the ministry of environment forest and climate change make the rules related to the emission vehicular emission but this is implemented by the central pollution control board and there was a question in the prelims 
with respect to the Central Pollution Control Board. Next scheme related to is the FIM. Faster adoptability. and manufacturing of electric vehicle, faster adoptability and manufacturing of electric vehicle. Now it's a second season, the FAME 2.0. The scheme was started in approximately in 2016. And the target of this scheme was Achieving the 30% of electric vehicle by 2030. The total vehicle on the road in India, it should convert 30% of them into the electric vehicles. Thirty percent of electric vehicle by 2030. And the main idea behind this was first focus on the adaptability first focus on the adaptability means the people can easily adapt it's very difficult if the same vehicle in the petrol costs you almost 12 lakh and the with electric vehicle costs you 17 lakh so there will be the adaptability issue so the main objective of this scheme, let's focus on the adaptability. Without the involvement of the people, the scheme cannot be successful. The second was focus on the technology. Focus on technology. So if we are focusing on technology, the prices of the electric vehicle can be decreased. A stable technology is required. If we see the recent incidents related to the uh, vehicles, like a firing in the vehicles due to the battery, that's also the issue of stability in the technologies required. Then third, focus on the manufacturing. Manufacturing of these vehicles, focusing on the high-class manufacturing. Now the Tesla is also coming to India for the electric vehicle. And the finally, to make the infrastructure, infrastructure development, like the development of a charging station in the major city of the country, development of the charging station. So these are the main idea behind the fame scheme faster adoptability in manufacturing of the electric vehicle. Next scheme by government of India is the PLI. PLI scheme. Production link incentive. Production link incentive scheme. Means for the production of the higher number of vehicle and the good quality and the stable technology. The government providing the fundings to the private company for the production of the electric vehicle in the country. Next scheme is the National Mobility Mission. National Mobility Mission. National Mobility Mission by the Government of India. We specifically focusing on moving toward the electric vehicles, moving toward those vehicles which are non polluting, which are not releasing the carbon dioxide. So these are some of the government schemes related to the decarbonizing the transport. Now, let's come to the Niti Ayog recommendation. What's the recommendation by the Niti Ayog? Recommendation of the Niti Ayog. 
you can quote these recommendation directly into the paper into the way forward what can be done kya kiya ja sakta hai kya required hai the first recommendation was increase reliance on the zero carbon electricity increase reliance on the zero carbon electricity the first point we discuss the more than 90% of the electricity from the coal now we need to be focus on the zero carbon electricity means the electricity from renewable energy like solar energy wind energy from the water resources so we should focus on the zero carbon electricity if we are generating the electricity from coal and we are moving towards the electric vehicles means in the first phase we are emitting the carbon dioxide in the form of the carbon dioxide from the power plants but on the second phase we are saying we are moving towards the electric vehicles I means this is the contradictory with the policy of the government eliminate fossil fuel subsidy this is the other major factors I means they decrease or they, uh, eliminate the subsidy on the petrol on diesel there should be no subsidy given by the government of india so that the people are discouraged toward buying the petrol and the diesel vehicle and they can move toward the electric vehicle but the short term this has a high impact increase in the inflation because more than 77 to 75% of the freight are transported through the road sector and which are majorly using the petrol and diesel then avoid shift improve strategy avoid means avoid using the single vehicle you have a five seater car and single person is going in that car shifting toward the government transport like the metro like the bus and improve the public infrastructure improve the public transport avoid shift and improve strategy so you can use these keywords when you are answering your question market ramp up of power to x fuels means we need to be shift from the fuel which are leading to the pollution to the non polluting fuels so these were the four major recommendation by the niti aayog with respect to decarbonizing the transport sector so if we are summing up it the firstly we discuss about the data related to the world then about the data related to india what is the exactly the decarbonization of transport what steps can be taken kya kya technology use hui hai what is the government schemes related to the decarbonization sector and what's the recommendation of the niti aayog isse zyada kuch nahi chahiye whenever you are writing your answer this is more than enough this is having the case study this is having the data this is having the examples so you can write with respect to the any answer which is on the decarbonization of the transport now note down the question hmm. they are saying the market ramp up to power to x fuels power means the electric vehicles to x fuels reduce down the usage of the petrol and the diesel vehicles market ramp up of power means the electric vehicles I means shifting from the conventional to the renewable one this is a question this is a homework for you in the third point avoid means avoid the single vehicles in the five seater car you are traveling single so please avoid shift to the government shift to the government infrastructure like the delhi metro or the other metro shifting toward the bus then improve improve the government infrastructure related to the transport sector how can effective decarbonization of the transport how can effective decarbonization of the transport sector contribute to contribute to mitigating 
contribute to mitigating climate change impact yes srishti you can say vehicle scrapage policy like after the 10 years there will be a rating for your vehicle if it's polluting the environment then it will go to the scrap 10 year for the diesel vehicle and the 15 years for the petrol vehicle this is under the government scrapage policy now let's move to the second topic second topic is a cell free dna DNA is the favorite topic of the UPSC. If you see the previous equation of the prelims, on an average two to three question on the DNA. Even in the last year, they asked in 2023 itself, this year, they asked question on the satellite DNA. So we need to know about the various different types of the DNA. What's the difference between the DNA and the RNA? different type of the RNA. What does it mean? The cell free DNA. Humne to yahi suna tha ki cell ke andar hota hai. So what does it mean? Ki cell free DNA hai kya? What's the application of the cell free DNA? So this is the common perspective we need to be know. In the mains, there's a question related to the DNA, but from the biotechnology perspective, you will find. In each year, there will be a single question from the biotechnology in the mains also. A question aapko milega out of the three or four question from the science and technology. So means the biotechnology part is very important for the prelims as well as the mains. Anybody can tell me what's the cell-free DNA? What does it mean? From the name itself, the DNA outside the cell, the extracellular DNA. Mainly the DNA we are finding in the nucleus, in the mitochondria. So they are named name as the nucleus DNA or the mitochondrial DNA. And this is a cell free DNA, means the DNA in the extracellular part of the cell, in the extracellular part. This is no free DNA. They say this is the cell and outside the cell. We can find the fragments, not in the huge amount, but we can find the fragments. And this is also in the some specific condition. This is in the specific condition. This can be found in the case of cancer. When any person is suffering with the cancer. In the case of the abnormal disease like Alzheimer. And if there is any abnormality in the body, in the, some of the specific case, we can find the cell free DNA in the body of the human. And there are the various application of this DNA. What can be the application? Organ transplantation, so there is a term DD cell free dna dd cell free dna donor derived donor derived cell free dna donor derived cell free dna let's see the image so it can be the clear here this person is Transplantation of the kidney and this person is giving kidney to this person. But the body of this person rejecting the kidney because of the presence of the CCDN means in the case of the transplantation of the various organ in the human body, this DNA play a very important role. The unpresence means we can easily transfer, but the presence of the Cellular DNA, the extracellular DNA or the free DNA will reject the kidney and it may cause the kidney injury. So in the case of the 
ट्रांसप्लांटेशन दिस इज नोन एज द डोनर डिराइव सेल फ्री डीएनए मीन्स इन्होंने किडनी दी एंड दिस इज डिराइव फ्रॉम द डोनर डीएनए तो दे विल बी द इश्यू टू द रिसीवर रोल्स द सेकेंड एप्लीकेशन यू कैन राइट अर्ली डिटेक्शन ऑफ कैंसर अर्ली डिटेक्शन ऑफ द कैंसर अर्ली डिटेक्शन ऑफ कैंसर मीन्स दिस डीएनए मेनली फाउंड इन द पर्सन दो हैविंग द एबनॉर्मेलिटी दो हैविंग द कैंसर इन द इनिशियल स्टेज तो इफ वी आर फाइंड द कैंसर इन द इनिशियल स्टेज वी आर फाइंडिंग द सेल फ्री डीएनए वी कैन डिटेक्ट कैंसर ऑन द अर्लियर स्टेज तो अर्लियर स्टेज पे कैंसर को डिटेक्ट किया जा सकता है कैन ऑल्सो भी ट्रीटेड थर्ड इन द केस ऑफ द एल्जाइमर डिजीज ट्रीटमेंट ऑफ द एल्जाइमर ट्रीटमेंट ऑफ एल्जाइमर फोर्थ इन द केस ऑफ द किस केस में हो सकता है एनी आइडिया to check the sex of the baby it's male or female so we can also use the extracellular dna in that case even in the case of the check the genetic digits if the newborn is having the any genetic disease or not that can also be checked through the cell free dna so these are the some of the application of the cell free dna and they will be a simple question cell free dna was recently mentioned in the news it has the application in or what does it mean simple like this here question you can see the question first this was the question in the 2023 micro satellite dna is used in the case of application the name of the dna and the application simple question similarly you will find the question in the upsc prelims in the last 6 7 years you can find easily the 8 to 10 question related to the dna or rna so what can be the answer ddcf is the donor derived cell free dna abhi now donor derived cell free dna yes we can see in the case of the metabolic disorder genetic disorder answer will be a studying the evolutionary relationship among various species of fauna these kind of the question you will find in the prelims related to the dna now we will see the different kind of dna different kind of dna kya kya type ho sakte hain what can be the type biology nahi padhi class 10 बैक्टीरियल डीएनए प्लीज राइट बैक्टीरियल डीएनए सेकेंड इज अ प्लाज्मिक डीएनए थर्ड इज अ सैटेलाइट डीएनए दैट वाज़ द क्वेश्चन मेनली लोकेशन ऑफ द डीएनए इज द न्यूक्लियस एंड द माइटोकॉन्ड्रिया nucleus and the mitochondria is the mainly location of the dna and the, these are types bacterial dna plasmid dna and the satellite dna this here was the question on the satellite dna so let's see through the figure so easily we can see satellite dna you will find in the entangled shape and the plasmid dna you will find in the circular shape and this dna has a huge application in the field of biotechnology with the help of the bacteriophage we can cut this dna and we can introduce the another gene which will help in the production of insulin which help in the production of the pest resistant variety of the crops bt cotton bt brinjal uh, mustard gm mustard crops so let's see the image of this dna the plasmid dna 
there are the various kind of the indicators we can say oxygen cytokine opine right border opine catabolism viral lines region these are the indicators position if we are introducing the gene here through a technique we can identify the gene it introduced on the same place and this will introduce into the body of the organism that can easily produce the same thing that required the insulin production through the pig through this process only you people just know plasmid dna having the round in shape and also having the application in the biotechnology for the production of the gmo for the production of the pest resistant crops kisi bhi case mein iska use ho sakta that's the simple thing you need to remember and the next is the satellite dna they ask about this question the micro satellite satellite dna is the dna which specifically found in the chromosomes we having a 23 pair of the chromosome 23 pairs of the chromosome and we are finding the satellite dna here So there are the various type alpha beta micro mini so in the different location this is the mini satellites this is the micro satellites this is the alpha and beta satellites in the case of the application the dna can be used or can have the various application like the dna fingerprinting aap logo ne suna hoga in dna fingerprinting to check the parents the application that asked to check the genetic disorder and had the various application so you need to know about the satellite dna what's a different type of satellite dna what is the plasmid dna and what is the bacterial dna ye genetic genetic disorder genetic disorder now we look at the difference between the rna and the dna what is the difference between rna and dna hmm? theek hai one difference is the let's draw RNA is a single stranded and the DNA is the double stranded second difference hmm? RNA used in the protein synthesis we can say yes the first difference we can say in the form of the base pair adenine guanine cytosine and uracil this is the base pair of what's the base pair of dna instead of the uracil it will be replaced by the thiamine all other three base pair will be the same in the case of dna but there is a difference of the fourth base pair instead of uracil in the rna it will be the thiamine in the dna so this is the second difference the type of dna we studied now the type of dna like rna trna rrna and mrna mrna is the messenger rna r rna is the ribosomal rna and the trna is the transfer rna and these rna mainly used in the protein synthesis protein synthesis and there is also difference in the sugar what is the difference this dna is having a deoxyribose sugar and the rna is the
RNA is having the ribose sugar and the DNA is having the deoxy ribose sugar. The name from the name we can say DNA, deoxy ribonucleic acid. RNA is the ribonucleic acid. This is the difference of the basis adenine, guanine, cytosine, thymine. Adenine, guanine, cytosine, uracil. Means the thymine is replaced by uracil in RNA. This is DNA and this is RNA. DNA is the double stranded, RNA is the single stranded. Anti parallel helix, this is the anti parallel helix, single. And this is the hairpin loop. Like a hairpin, it's a loop. Location, it can be found into the nucleus or maybe in the mitochondria. Its difference is cytoplasm. RNA is also found in the cytoplasm where we cannot find a DNA into cytoplasm. Process in the case transcription. What is the what is transcription exactly? What is it? Conversion of D RNA to DNA. RNA to DNA. And when we are converting DNA to RNA, that's a reverse transcription. And translation is the process of production of the protein, the protein synthesis. And the types, the nuclear DNA, mitochondrial DNA, messenger transfer, and the ribosomal. Messenger RNA, transfer RNA, and the ribosomal RNA. Messenger RNA specifically used in the production of vaccine. mRNA derived vaccine during the COVID. Ribosomal RNA specifically used in the production of the protein synthesis in the cell. And also the tRNA, the transfer RNA is also used in the production of the protein synthesis. So these are the use of it. So mainly they are asking the question on the basis of these differences only, these five, six differences, but in the some another form, not direct, but in the another form. So you need to read the statement very carefully whenever you are answer the question on the basis of DNA and RNA. Translation is the production of protein, the process of protein synthesis. Now, let's move to the third topic. What is urea gold? Everybody know about the neem coated urea? Now, there is a next new type of the urea is known as the urea gold. Any idea what does it mean, the urea gold? Gold to nahi mi laenge. What's the name suggest the urea gold? So, the first question, this was a question in 2016 in UPSC. At that time, the government lost the neem coated urea. So, directly question in the same year in 2016 about the neem coated urea. Why does government of India promote the use of neem coated urea in agriculture? Release neem oil in the soil, increase nitrogen fixation by soil microorganism. Neem coating slow down the rate of dissolution of urea in the soil. Nitrous oxides and the combination of the vidicides. What can be the answer? Hmm? D. 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 B. Yes, B is the answer. The neem coating slow down the rate of dissolution of urea in the soil and it can be for the longer time. Now, there is a new kind of the urea. Urea gold. This is also known as the sulfur coated urea. Sulfur coated urea. Urea gold is sulfur coated urea. Means the normal urea will be coated with the sulfur and it will be used in the field. Why we are coating? 
with the sulfur so it can improve the sulfur requirement of the soil improve the sulfur requirement of the soil second it increase the availability of the urea for longer time availability of the urea for longer time third increase the production if the soil is rich with the sulfur and the nitrogen it will also help in increasing the production number 4 help in increasing the income of farmer by because normal urea we require a 20 kg for an example instead of 20 kg this urea is only required 15 kg huh. less amount of urea is required after the coating it is better than the neem coated urea also It is better than and highly efficient than the neem coated urea. It is better and the highly efficient than the neem coated urea. So it will increase the sulfur requirement, increase the availability of the urea for the longer time. Means availability of urea means availability of nitrogen. Increase the production, help in reducing the cost for the farmer better than the neem coated urea so the government introduced the sulfur coated urea is known as the urea gold for the farmer where you will use whenever there is a question related to the government what steps are taken by the government for the farmers for improvement of agriculture for the soil health so you can use directly the urea gold and the neem coated urea what step the government are taking for Reducing the subsidy on the fertilizers, you can also use the way how government can reduce. How government can reduce the consumption of the urea through the sulfur because we are decreasing the amount of the urea per field. So you can use this information as a case study also, as an example also, as a way, for, way forward also in the main answer. In the prelims, there will be a direct question on the basis of these five things. In the prelims, these five things are okay. You need to be remember what's the urea gold and what's the use. And in the maze, it's depend on you where you are using it. Because every time there will be agriculture question, three, two to three question in the GS3, and the one to two question in the GS1 from the agriculture. So it depends on you how you will use it. Huh? कहाँ पे यूरिया का फॉर्मूला क्या होता है तो इसमें रेशो ऑन द डिपेंड ऑन अ टू एटम ऑफ नाइट्रोजन नर्मन ऑफ कार्बन आप रेशो दूसरी वाली रेशो की बात कर रहे होंगे एनपीके Nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. What is shown as Geography optional, but they are not. So, you check what is the Exactly, I am not remembering what's the ratio. So, it will be you will check what's the ratio of the NPK. Now, the last topic we will discuss. India rice export crops goods per food price inflation. Recently, India banned the export of rice except the basmati rice, except the two variety basmati and the paraboiled rice. India is the largest exporter of the rice in the world. Who is the largest producer? China is the largest producer of rice in the world. We are approximately 
exporting more than 20 percent more than 20 percent these are the ratio we are exporting 22.5 percent in the world and out of these 22.5 percent known basmati variety is more than 40 percent india is exporting overall 22.5 percent of the rice to the world including all variety and out of this 22 percent 40 percent was the known basmati variety like the tuba rice sona masuri rice and there's the multiple variety of the rice that india is exporting to the country what happened if india is not exporting the rice to the other country kya kya ho sakta hai? There is increase in the inflation. Kaha pe? In foreign country. Why? But why India is not exporting? Kyu nahi kar raha? This year, due to the flooding in the northern India, there is a less production of the rice. That's why for the food security purpose. Because the rice is included in the PDS. Because of the food security and the mainly inclusion rice is known basmati rice in the PDS. So that's why India banned the export of the known basmati variety. So there will be a less inflation into the country. And we can easily secure the food security related to the rice. According to a report, of FAO, there is almost increase in the price of 13% in the last month itself. There is increase in the 13% price, price in the last month itself in the June. And if now India is banning the export, there is a higher chance there will be increase in the prices of the rice as well. So if this rice is in the news, what you will study more? The condition required for it. What are the growing condition? Variety of the rice. Which variety is having the GI tag? Which state is the highest producer of the rice in the country? Which state? Which state hai? Which state is the highest producer of rice? Check karke aao. West Bengal. Also about the geographical condition. It's contributed to the pollution. There was a question in 2021, which crop is the highest producer of the methane? So answer was rice. This was a question in 2021, UPSC prelims. So you will see all the perspective related to the rice. Now, let's see what can be the impact when India is banning the export of the rice. This is a list The China is the largest producer and India is the second largest producer. And the known basmati rice is mainly used by the less developed country or the least developed country, we can say. And like the Nepal, Bhutan, country of Africa. These are the mainly country which are consuming the non basmati rice, means there is a higher impact on these country. So these are the implication, the global supply shortage. India is the highest exporter. India nahi ban kiya. So there will be a supply shortage. There is an increase in the price in the global market. These are the interlink point. If there is a supply shortage, there is an increase in the global rice price. There is also issue of the food security in the some region, in the African region. Due to the less availability. Domestic supply concern, why India banned it? Due to the weather condition in the India, this time, the direct effect on Production, 
direct effect on production for the food security region. Rice is included in the PDS. So these are domestic supply concern. That's why the India Bank. Loss of the credibility as a reliable trade partner. You are trading with the, any of the country. We are approximately exporting the rice to the under 20 country in the world. And we were a credible partner. We were the credible partner. And instantly we are saying we are not exporting the rice. So there is a decrease in the credibility as a trading partner. So this is a negative impact on the Indian trade. Now India is banning the rice. Maybe some other country will say we are, we are banning some other product that's required by that's consumed by India. Market building efforts may affect Hoga. We are building the market overseas for the different products. We are increasing the make in India so we can export stand up India, start up India, so we can export. But this is abrupting the market building overseas. Potential of domino effects. Dominoes effect nahi hai, domino effects. Potential of domino effects means if a country banning the rice, then the another highest producer also start banning it. This was happened in the 2008 when Vietnam banned the export of rice. So it may also lead to domino effects. It will also increase domino effects. So these are the implications of the ban of rice exports. So what can be the question here? For the prelim perspective, they will ask about the condition, geographical condition. They can ask about the methane gas, the release of the methane gas from the rice field. They can also ask about the states, the highest producer state, the highest consumer, highest producing country and exporter country. What are the conditions required? These are the prelims question they can ask. In the mains, they can ask with relate to the trade specifically. If the India is banning the agriculture products, what can be the impact on the Indian economy or what can be the implication on the export policy of the government of India? So these kind of the question can be framed. So this was the last topic. Tomorrow there will be a test from the date 31st July to 4th August. 31st July to 4th August, 20 questions. 6 to 7 questions from the yesterday mapping class. 6 to 7 questions from the mapping class we conducted yesterday. And all other questions from the 31st July to 4th August. And we discussed the four topics today, means the four questions from these four topics also. So means you know the 10 questions from the class only. So it should be more than 25 marks for everyone in tomorrow test. And the test timing will be 11. Test timing is 11 a.m. every Saturday. And I can assure you, this is more than enough that required in the current affairs for the prelims and the means. If you are regular with these classes, there is no need to read from anywhere else. Okay. So where can we find the 31st July to 4 August current affairs? You can find this on the Educami website. In the current affairs section, you will find the date wise current affairs. Like it's today's current affairs uploaded 11th August. So you can click here and you can find the other date as well. Okay, like it's uh, 11th August, 10th August and you can find 7th August, 8th August, 9th August. If you're going down, you will find the current affairs of all the dates here. Test timing is 11. And it between 11 to 11.40, you can attempt the test. If any doubts in the test, you can ask me on the spot or maybe on the next Friday. 
I will try. It should be like uh, maybe YouTube live, so you can ask the test directly to me. Okay. So we will meet on meet tomorrow itself at eleven. We will meet tomorrow at eleven.